So the origin of the term soft skills is the US Army, back in the 1960s, was trying to classify a set of skills that they didn't know how to describe. Uh, and they called them soft skills. They were basically leadership skills, collaboration skills, um, character skills, uh, resilience. Um, <laughs> they called them soft because they didn't involve working with tanks or guns. <laughs> so there was no metal. The hard skills were the literal weapon skills. And then all the important stuff that they thought really drove growth and team success, those were soft skills. And they basically ruined our ability to take soft skills seriously for the next half century. Yeah. Thank you, U.S. Army. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, the book is, is in large part about soft skills and the, the building of these soft skills, the building of these character skills, how to cultivate them in ourselves, how to cultivate them in, in other people. One of the things that I think is unusual, very unusual about the book, I mean, there are, we're, we're, we're blessed. It's a golden age of kind of thoughtful books full of great stories and interesting research. One of the things that is different about this one is it so full of practical ideas. So, for example, the, you talk about prosociality. You have this example in the book of how you, with your own students, uh, you were giving them these tough tests and these multiple choice tests, and, and you said, oh, um, I will give you in some circumstances, you're allowed to basically say, hey, instead of using my answer, I'm going to nominate someone else in the class, and, uh, and whatever they say, you could give me that, the, the grade for that answer. And that, I think, unlocked something very interesting. And, and I don't think it was, you, you weren't intending to do it, right? You, it was an accident. Complete accident. So I went into class one day. I had a group of undergrads, mostly 20 and 21 years old. And I told them that the final exam was going to be extremely challenging because I think what I teach matters. I think understanding human psychology is relevant to your success and your happiness and your relationships with other people. And I want you to know this material cold. So I'm going to give you not just multiple choice questions. I'm going to give you multiple, multiple, multiple choice where uh, we've got five answer options. And you also have, it could be A and B, or A and C, or A and D, or A, B and C, or A and D. And they looked at the sample questions and freaked out. And they said, we're, we're just, even if we know the material, we're never gonna, we're never gonna figure this out. And I didn't, wanna, I didn't wanna reduce the challenge level, uh, but I did want to reduce their anxiety. So I said, all right, I'm gonna let you pick the hardest question and write down the name of a classmate who you think will know the answer. And if they get it right, you get the points too. And all of a sudden, they were like, great, yes, we're all going to memorize the name of the smartest kid in the class. <laughs> we're, we're all going to then write it down, and then, then we're good. And I gave out the final exam, and the class average went up by, I think it was 3%, uh, with an identical degree of difficulty from the previous year's exam. And then it happened again the next year. And I thought, I was like, oh, they're just getting the extra points because they wrote down the name of someone who knew the answer that they didn't. But actually, the gain had nothing to do with that. What happened was, and a group of students explained it to me, was once they needed to know who was the expert, they had to study together instead of alone. And so they started organizing group study sessions and class study sessions. And then each student became an expert on a different segment of the material. And then their job was to summarize it and teach it to the rest of the class. And lo and behold, the students who did the teaching were actually the ones who learned the most. Yeah. I mean, so I forget, there's the coach effect, there's the teacher effect. This is the tutor effect. The tutor, the tutor effect. Yeah. So talk us through this, because I found this very interesting. Okay, so the, the original finding here, um, can I just get a show of hands, how many of you are first born in your family? Oldest child, or, um, or only child? Okay, technically only child, you get to pick your order. You could be first or last. <laughs> um, okay, and how many of you are later born, so you have an older sibling? Okay, let me apologize in advance, I don't want to offend any of you. But there, there is an empirically robust finding in psychology that firstborns score slightly higher on IQ tests than laterborns. I knew it. <laughs> As a firstborn, I was delighted by this evidence. My sister was really pissed. <laughs> so the question is why? And you all know in birth order, it can't be genetics, right? There has to be a nurture component, not a nature component, um, or maybe something in between, which we probably won't talk about today. But one of the findings is that uh, actually the more younger siblings you have as a firstborn, uh, the more of an IQ boost you get. And it's a very small effect, by the way. But it comes from the fact that the older kid has to teach the younger siblings. And the more time you spend teaching your young, younger siblings, the more you have to retrieve information in your head, which means you remember it better. 
and the more you have to explain it, which means you understand it better. And so I think this is what was happening with my students is they were teaching this material over and over again, and eventually as they talked it through, it clicked and it stuck. And by the way, later borns, you just need to teach other kids, and you're good. <laughs>